Hello students, welcome to Read Med Prep Academy channel. Today in plant breeding part 2, we are going to talk about the introduction to plant breeding and conventional methods of plant breeding. Plant breeding is the science of improvement of crop varieties with higher yield, better quality, resistance to diseases and shorter durations which are suitable to particular environment. In other words, it is a purposeful manipulation of plant species in order to create desired genotype and phenotype for the benefit of humans. In early days, plant breeding activities were based mainly on skills and ability of a person involved. But as the principles of genetics and cytogenetics have elucidated breeding methods such as selection, introduction, hybridization, ploidy, mutation, Tissue culture and biotechnology techniques were designed to develop improved crop varieties. What is the role of plant breeding? Human beings are dependent on the plants. For food, breeding of field crops provides us food either directly through food grains or indirectly through meat and milk. Shelter, in addition to food by produce of agriculture, farms are used in making shelter by farmers of rural areas. Clothing, breeding for fiber crops like cotton, provides clothes for the human population. Fuels, crops like euphorbia and jatropha are used for biofuel production. Breeding of such crops tackles the problems of energy production for rapidly increasing human population. Nowadays, maize is also used as an important source of ethanol production. What are the objectives of plant breeding? To increase the yield, vigor and fertility of the crop. To increase the tolerance to environmental conditions, salinity, temperature and drought. To prevent the premature falling of buds, fruits etc. To improve the synchronous maturity. To develop resistance to pathogens and pests. To develop photosensitive and thermosensitive varieties. Here in this image, the objectives of plant breeding are summed up. Like the higher yield, resistance to disease and pests change in maturity period, elimination of toxic substances, synchronous maturity, photoinsensitivity, resistance to abiotic stress and improved quality. What are the steps in plant breeding? The main steps in plant breeding are like domestication which is done through plant introduction, hybridization and germ collection and by mutation like polyploidy, tissue culture and genetic engineering. The domestication and mutation helps in the creation of genetic variation through selection and evaluation release as a variety, seed multiplication and distribution of the seeds for further propagation of the plants. Now let's move on to the conventional plant breeding methods. In this we are going to talk about the plant introduction, plant selection, hybridization, heterosis, mutation breeding and polypoid breeding. Conventional plant breeding methods resulting in hybrid varieties had a tremendous impact on the agricultural productivity. Over the last decades, it develops new plant varieties by the process of selection and seeks to achieve expression of genetic material which is already present within the species. Now, what is plant introduction? It may be defined as the introduction of genotypes from a place where it is normally grown to a new place or environment. Rice variety of IR8 introduced from Philippines and wheat varieties of Sonora 63, Sonora 64 from Mexico. In this image, you can see the left side IR8 which is a paddy variety and on the right side you can see the sonora wheat variety. The newly introduced plant has to adapt itself to the new environment. This adjustment or adaptation of the introduced plant in the changed environment is called acclimatization. All the introductions must be free from the presence of weeds, insects and disease causing organisms. This has to be carefully examined by the process called quarantine. A strict isolation imposed to prevent the spread of disease. Introduction may be classified as primary introduction and secondary introduction. Primary introduction when the introduced variety is well adapted to the new environment without any alternation to the original genotype. Secondary introduction when the introduced variety is subjected to selection to isolate a superior variety and hybridize with the local variety to transfer one or a few characters to them. The botanical garden in different parts of the world also played a significant role in plant introduction. Example, tea varieties collected from China and Northeast India initially grown in botanical garden of Kolkata from which appropriate clones have selected and introduced to different parts of India. 
National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources NBPGR the bureau is responsible for introduction and maintenance of germ plasm of various agricultural and horticultural station in our country it is responsible for maintenance of plant materials of botanical and medicinal interest it is located at Rangpuri New Delhi and has four regional plant quarantine stations at Amritsar Kolkata Mumbai and Chennai at Minambakam what is meant by selection Selection is the choice of certain individuals from a mixed population for a one or more desirable traits. Selection is the oldest and the basic method of plant breeding. There are two main types of selection, natural selection and artificial selection. Natural selection, this is a rule in the nature and results in evolution reflected in the Darwinian principle, the survival of the fittest. It takes longer time in bringing about the desired variation. Breeding two compatible species to create an offspring which may or may not have the desired traits by nature is called natural selection occurs naturally without any intentional human intervention traditional laws of heredity and inheritance determine which traits will be expressed in the offspring if an organism has a trait that is of benefit this it will have a greater chance of reproducing and passing on that gene example survival of the fittest what is artificial selection it is a human involved process in having better crop from a mixed population where the individuals differ in character the three main types of artificial selection are mass selection pure line selection and clonal selection mass selection a large number of plants of similar phenotype or morphological characters are selected and their seeds are mixed together to constitute a new variety. The population obtained from the selected plants would be more uniform than the original population and are not individually tested. After repeated selection for about five to six years, the selected seeds are multiplied and distributed to the farmers. The only disadvantage of mass selection is that it is difficult to distinguish between the hereditary variation from environmental variation now what is pure line selection wilhelm johansson in 1903 coined the word pure line it is a collection of plants obtained as a result of repeated self-pollination from a single homozygous individual hence a variety obtained by this method shows more homozygosity with respect to all genes the disadvantage of this type is that the new genotypes are never created and they are less adaptable and less stable to the environmental fluctuation. Here you can see the difference between the mass selection versus the pure line selection. On the left side, the mass selection, bulk of phenotypically similar plants are produced and the cultivar registers and markets the plants. All the cultivars are heterogeneous cultivars. In pure line selection, a single plant offspring is propagated like the L1, L2, L3 till Ln and it is registered and marketed as the best pure lines and the cultivars are homogeneous cultivars. Now what is clonal selection? In asexually propagated crop, progenies derived from a plant resemble in genetic constitution with the parent plant as they are mitotically divided. Based on their phenotypic appearance, clonal selection is employed to select improved variety from a mixed population otherwise called clones. The selected plants are multiplied through vegetative propagation to give rise to a clone. The genotype of a clone remains unchanged for a long period of time. Now what is clonal selection? In this image you can see in the first year a mixture of clones is done. Few to several hundred superior plants are selected. In the second year clones from selected plants are taken. These clones from the selected plants are grown separately and desirable clones are selected. In the third year, preliminary yield trials with standard checks, selection for quality disease, resistance, etc. Few outstanding clones are selected. In the fourth to sixth years, multi-location yield trial is done, where the plants are grown in different locations, where the traits are taken and selected and standard checks are done. And the best clone identified for release as a new variety. In the fifth year, the seed multiplication is done. Multi-location yield trials with standard checks being done and best clone is identified for release as a new variety. Here in this image you can see the artificial selection that was done and the correlated traits. Broccoli separation of flower development was done. In cabbage separation of internal length. In kale enlargement of leaves. In kohlrabi enhancement of lateral meristems. In wild mustard various procedures were done to increase the yield. 
and cauliflower sterility of the flowers. Now, what are the differences between natural selection and artificial selection? Natural selection is the process whereby organisms better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offsprings. Whereas in artificial selection is the process by which the animals and plants are chosen by the breeder to produce desirable and inheritable characters in the successive generations. Nature-made selection process is the natural selection, whereas artificial selection is a man-made selection process. Produces a huge biological diversity, whereas in artificial selection produces organisms with selected traits. Occurs in natural populations, whereas in artificial selection mainly occurs in domestic populations. Natural selection allows favorable characters to be inherited over the successive generations, whereas artificial selection allows only selected traits to be inherited over successive generations. Natural selection is a slow process. Artificial selection is a rapid process. Natural selection facilitates evolution through generating biological diversity, whereas artificial selection does not facilitate evolution. Examples in natural selection, selection of long neck giraffes and change in the size and shape of beaks of birds upon the available food. In artificial selection, breeding of small dogs and cattle which can produce more milk. Now what is hybridization? It is the method of producing a new crop varieties in which two or more plants of unlikely genetic constitution is crossed together that results in the progeny called hybrid. Hybridization offers improvement in the crop and is the only effective means of combining together the desirable characters of two or more varieties or species. The first natural hybridization was observed by cotton mather in maize. What are the steps of hybridization? Selection of parents, emasculation, bagging, crossing, harvesting seeds and raising plants. Selection of parents, male and female plants of the desired characters are selected. It should be tested for their homozygosity. Emasculation, it is a process of removal of anthers to prevent self-pollination before anthesis, period of opening of a flower or dehiscence of anther. Here in this image, you can see the emasculation procedure. The above image, you can see the entire flower with the male sex organ like the anther and the filament constituting the stamen and the style and the stigma. The removal of the anthers and leaving the stigma in the flower is called emasculation where the pollen from another flower is taken and is deposited on the stigma of the emasculated flower. What is bagging? The stigma of the flower is protected against any undesirable pollen grains falling on the stigma by covering it with a bag. Here you can see the procedure of emasculation and the bagging of wheat. Crossing. Transfer of pollen grains from selected male flower to the stigma of the emasculated flower is called crossing. Harvesting seeds and raising plants. The pollination leads to fertilization and finally seed formation takes place and the seeds are grown into a new generation which are called hybrid. What are the types of hybridization? Intravarietal hybridization, intervarietal hybridization, interspecific hybridization and intergeneric hybridization. Intravarietal hybridization, the cross is done between the plants of the same variety. Such crosses are useful only in self-pollinated crops. Intervarietal hybridization, the cross made between the plants belonging to two different varieties of the same species and is also known as intraspecific hybridization. This technique has been the basis of improving self-pollinated as well as cross-pollinated crops. Interspecific hybridization, the cross between the plants belonging to different species belonging to the same genus is called intragenic hybridization. It is commonly used for transferring the genes of disease, insect, pest and drought resistance from one species to another. Example, Gossypium hirsutum and cross with Gossypium arboreum. Here in this image you can see the flower of Gossypium hirsutum. And on the right side, you can see the flower of Gossypium arboreum. What is intergeneric hybridization? The crosses are made between the plants belonging to two different genera. The disadvantages are hybrid sterility, time consuming and expensive procedure. Example, Raphanobrassica and Triticale. Intergeneric Raphanobrassica hybridization. Raphanus sativum, which is called radish on the left side and Brassica oleracea cabbage. And these are crossed to produce a hybrid. With colchicine treatment, Raphano brassica plant is obtained. Here in this image, you can see the intergeneric 
triticale hybridization, where triticale is T1, which is a hexaploid wheat. 6N is equal to 42. CKL cereal, European rye, 2N is equal to 14. When these are crossed, a hybrid is obtained with colchicine treatment, octaploid triticale is obtained. Now, what is heterosis? Hetero means different. Cis means condition. G. H. Schull was the first scientist to use the term heterosis in 1912. The superiority of the F1 hybrid in performance over its parents is called heterosis or hybrid vigor. Heterosis refers to the phenomenon in which the hybrid offspring exhibits characteristics that lie outside the range of the parents. In the image below on the left side you can see MO17 crossed with B73 and the F1 hybrid that is obtained has a bigger and larger corn. On the right side image you can see the plant of MO17 and B73 when they are crossed and the plants obtained in F1 generation are very taller and bigger and the yield is better. Vigor refers to increase in growth, yield, greater adaptability of resistance to diseases, pest and drought. Vegetative propagation is the best suited measure for maintaining hybrid vigor since the desired characters are not lost and can persist over a period of time. Many breeders believe that its magnitude of heterosis is directly related to the degree of genetic diversity between two parents. Depending upon the nature, origin, adaptability and reproducing ability, heterosis can be classified as euheterosis and pseudoheterosis. Euheterosis is the true heterosis which is inherited and is further classified as mutational euheterosis and balanced euheterosis. Mutational euheterosis is the result of natural consequence of the phenomenon of dominance. Simplest type of euheterosis and results from the sheltering or eliminating of the deleterious, unfavorable, often lethal recessive mutant genes by their adaptively superior dominant alleles in cross-pollinated crops. Balanced euheterosis, well-balanced gene combinations, which is more adapted to environmental conditions and agricultural usefulness. What is pseudoheterosis, also termed as luxuriance? Progeny possess superiority of parents in vegetative growth but not in yield and adaptation, usually sterile or poorly fertile. Now, what is mutation breeding? Muller and Stadler in 1927 to 1928 coined the term mutation breeding. You can see the images of H.J. Muller and Louis J. Stadler. Mutation breeding represents a new method of conventional breeding procedures as they have the advantage of improving the defect without losing agronomic and quality character in agriculture and crop improvement. Mutation means the sudden heritable changes in the genotype or phenotype of an organism. Gene mutations are of considerable importance in plant breeding as they provide essential inputs for evolution as well as for recombination and selection. It is the only method for improving seedless crops. Radiation such as UV short wave, X-ray, alpha rays, beta rays, gamma waves and many chemicals such as cesium, Ethyl methane sulfonate EMS, nitromethyl urea induces mutation to develop new variety of crop. Here you can see the nucleotide chain and the gamma rays having an effect on the nucleotide chain which can be an indirect effect or it can be a direct effect to damage the nucleotide. Example, triple gene dwarf wheat with increase in yield and height. You can see in the image on the left side, the semi dwarf varieties on either side and the tall variety of wheat in the center. Automata 2 rice with saline tolerance and pest resistance. You can see the image on the right side. What is gamma garden or atomic garden? It's a form of mutation breeding where plants are exposed to radioactive sources, typically cobalt 60 or cesium 137 in order to generate desirable mutation in crop plants. The first gamma garden in India is Bose Research Institute at Kolkata in 1959. And the second is IARI, Indian Agricultural Research Institute in 1960, which produced large variation in short type. Here you can see the layout of a gamma garden. It has an outermost thick wall. Inside to it is the sector 3, which gets minimum radiation. Inside to the sector 3 is sector 2, which gets moderate radiation. And inner to it is the sector 1, which gets the maximum radiation. And the center is the radiation source. Here you can see the gamma garden with a thick outer wall, the center source of radiation and the sector 1 surrounded by sector 2 and outer is the sector 3. What is polyploid breeding? Majority of flowering plants are diploid, 2N. The plants which possess more than two sets of chromosomes are called polyploids. Polyploid is a major force in the evolution of both wild and cultivated plants. Polyploidy often exhibit increased hybrid vigor, increased heterozygosity, increased the tolerance to both biotic and abiotic stresses 
buffering of deleterious mutations. In addition, polyploidy often results in reduced fertility due to meiotic error, allowing the production of seedless varieties. When chromosome number is doubled by itself in the same plant is called autopolyploidy. A triploid condition in sugar beets, apples and pear has resulted in the increase in vigor and fruit size, large root size, large leaves, flower, more seeds and sugar content in them. It also resulted in seedless tomato, apple, watermelon and orange. So the mechanism of autopolyploidy you can see the karyotype of the parent species is 2n is equal to 6 and when the gametes are unreduced each gamete will have 6 chromosomes because of meiotic error. And the fertilization of these two unreduced gametes because of meiotic error result in an autopolyploid zygote, which is 4n is equal to 12, which is a tetraploid. Offspring with polyploid karyotypes may be viable and self-fertile. Polyploidy can be induced by the use of cochicine to double the chromosome number. Allopolyploids are produced by multiplication of chromosome sets that are initially derived from two different species. Example, triticale, triticum durum and cecal cereal. Raphanobrassica, Brassica oleoraceae and Raphanus sativus. Here you can see the allopolyploidy resulting from viable matings between the two species. Species 1 and species 2 can produce gametes. Species 1 can produce a normal gamete and species 2 produces a polyploid gamete. And the mating produces the polyploid gamete. When the polyploid gamete is again fertilized with the normal gamete, it gets a second mating and produces a polyploid individual because of the colchicine treatment. In this image you can see the above rye CKL cereal which is a diploid sporophyte number 14. Haploid gamete Vn is equal to 7 is crossed with breadweed triticum estivum hexaploid sporophyte which has 42 number of chromosomes and diploid gamete is produced which is 3n is equal to 21. Rye n is equal to 7 is crossed with wheat 3n is equal to 21 it produces triticale 4n is equal to 28 on colchicine treatment the number of chromosome is doubled it produces 8n chromosome which is 56 below you can see rye cecal cereal diploid sporophyte is 14 and the haploid gamete n is equal to 7 and the durum wheat triticale tergidum which has tetraploid sporophyte which is 28 and diploid gamete 2n is equal to 14 when they are crossed Dry n is equal to 7 and wheat 2 n is equal to 14. The triticale obtained is 3 n is equal to 21. On cochicine treatment, the triticale 6 n is equal to 42. So today in plant breeding part 2, we discussed about the introduction to plant breeding and conventional methods of plant breeding. So thank you. Kindly subscribe, like, share and comment to channel Read Med Prep Academy. Register in our website for UG and PG MCQs www.readmedprepacademy.com. Our Facebook ID is ReadMedPrep Academy. Our email is readmedprepacademy at gmail.com. Our Instagram is readmedprepacademy. Kindly join Read Med Prep Academy for preparing 2022 and 2023 NEET exam. And what's up to the number given below. Kindly post your questions in the comment box. We will reply with appropriate answers. Thank you very much.